What up data nerds? I'm Luke and welcome to my channel where I help make learning data visualization easy. In this video today, we're going to focus on how to actually run Python on your computer. I remember when I first started with Python and I downloaded it to my computer, I was really confused on where I should actually be running Python code, or for that matter, where even I should be running the code. So for this today, we're going to be focusing on four main options of running your Python code. For all of these examples, it's important to understand that you have to have Python installed on your computer. So if you don't have Python installed, follow the the previous video in this tutorial series that shows how to actually install Python via Anaconda. First, we're going to start out with actually running Python in either your terminal or command prompt, which is specific to Mac or Windows. Next, we're going to move into using a code editor or also known as a text editor. Then we're going to move into an IDE, an integrated development environment. And then finally, we're going to cover a special case called a Jupyter Notebook. So with that, let's jump right in. For the first case, we're going to be using a Mac to use Python via the terminal. And then we'll go to Windows next using Command Prompt. So on a Mac, we'll press Command and Space. Spotlight search will appear. We'll then uh, type in Terminal and launch it. So Terminal is now launched. We're going to go ahead and enhance the font, make it a little bit bigger. And so now we're inside of here and we can start executing Python code. The simplest way to access it is just by typing Python. When you type Python, well, there's a few things we can see. We can see the version that it's operating and then what distribution we're using. So we're using the Anaconda distribution in our case. And then let's just do a couple simple examples. So um, Python can do a bunch of different arithmetic. So we can put in a simple math formula and it'll execute the answer. Also, we can put in simple code such as a, a print function and type uh, a hello world example and it will print hello world. So that's the easiest way to get going with using Python on your Mac. Here we are on a Windows machine and let's go through a similar process. So I can come down to the search bar, type CMD or command prompt, and then from there launch the command prompt app. Okay, I'm gonna expand it and then I can type in uh, Python like we did before, and it will execute uh, and load us into the Python environment, telling us distribution, what version we're using, and then those three arrows to tell us we're in the uh, operating in the Python interpreter. And similarly, you can do some arithmetic. So we'll do some uh, two squared, or you can even do the print hello world. And it looks like I misspelled that. So yeah, pretty simple as well on how to operate Python inside of Windows. Let's look at use cases for the terminal and command prompt. This is gonna be used heavily when we're going through and actually testing and executing different scripts and different modules. So that's the first main use. Additionally, it's gonna be used in conjunction with those text editors and IDEs that we're gonna be covering here in a little bit. Let's look at different options now. So for a Mac, we have Terminal already pre-installed on the computer and we can use that and that's gonna be for, uh, fine for starting out with Python. Maybe as you become more advanced, I would consider getting iTerm2, uh, but for now, let's just stick with the Terminal. For Windows users, the main tool used for this is gonna be either the Command Prompt or PowerShell. And this is gonna be perfectly uh, acceptable solution when you're starting and even continuing on. If you want to upgrade, maybe consider uh, upgrading to Windows Terminal, uh, but for now, the tools that you have installed is perfectly acceptable. Let's look at code editors now. In the most basic form, this is where you can actually write code and save it to a file. For this example, it doesn't really differentiate between Mac and PC, so we're gonna be doing this on a Mac. So let's go ahead and create an example script. So we'll make this code that prints hello uh, world. Whenever we execute this script, we need to go ahead and uh, save it as a Python file. So I'll go to save as, and I'll save it to my documents as hello world.py. 
and we'll save it. As I stated previously, we're gonna be using uh, Terminal to actually execute this script now. So if I wanted to execute this script, um, I've already navigated to the folder in Terminal for this script, but I can come in and type Python, and then I will type the name of the file, so hello world.py, and then I'm gonna press enter. And from there we can see, oh, hello world actually prints. So if I make changes to my file, um, I added this, and then I save it, and then run this again. We can see that it updates and shows that uh, we have the hello world, I added this. So what is the use case for a code editor? The main purpose of the code editor is to actually go in and use this to edit and modify code, and that's the main purpose. One thing to note is that we can actually upgrade our text editors and code editors to be on par with IDEs and give them features such as syntax highlighting, linting, and actually executing the code all within one environment. But because it's not included initially in the text editor or code editor that you download, it's not considered an IDE. Looking at some recommended options, you can see from my example, I was using Atom, also they have Sublime Text and Notepad++, and then surprise to some people, but Microsoft Visual Studio Code is actually classified as a code editor. Next, we're gonna look at an IDE or an integrated development environment, and for this example, we'll be using uh, PyCharm. So we're gonna continue with the previous example of the Hello World. And as you can see, so this is the IDE itself, and it's pretty neat because it encompasses everything. It'll have the folder structure of where your files are. Um, you can load the actual file here. So this is our hello world.py uh, file. And then you even have access to the terminal um, within it, or if you were on a Windows computer, you'd have the, the command prompt or shell down here at the bottom. So to show how it is actually an integrated development environment, let's actually go ahead and similar before how we ran the uh, hello world example, we can do that right here from the terminal inside the ID and we get the hello world, I added this. Also, we can just uh, go into here and run it uh, via the IDE itself and it will output uh, the code. The one last thing to note about an IDE that provides a benefit is it actually has a debugging feature within it. So if we wanted to, if we had some problem in the code itself, so we have some random gibberish right here, and then we go to run and debug, it will walk us through the steps of the code and locate where the problem is and help us with troubleshooting a lot easier. So looking at the use case, we can see that similar to a text setter and a terminal, it combines all those features in one. We have a place we can go in and write the code, execute the code, and then also debug the code. It also provides some other features that we won't get into, but it has a lot of the features jam-packed within it. Looking at different options we have for IDEs for Python, uh, popular choice is PyCharm, also Spider. You can use the what's built into Python, which is idle. Um, and then yeah, if you upgrade Visual Studio Code as well, it will operate similar to a IDE. For the last example, we're gonna be looking at Jupyter Notebooks. So we can access this via the terminal, also the command prompt. We just come in, we type in Jupyter Notebook, press enter, and from there it's going to launch the server and then it's going to launch uh, this uh, server that you can access via this link, which should pop up in a web browser. So here is the Jupyter Notebook server running in our web browser. It doesn't matter what the web browser is. We'll start a new, um, we'll start a new Python file. And similarly, we can come in and put some code in, so hello world, and press shift enter, and it will execute within here. And that's one of the neat features of this is that you can actually execute it uh, right underneath uh, where you have written the code. One thing to note, whenever you're done, we can go back to the, uh, we had a server running to actually execute this. Whenever we're done, you would just press uh, control C to stop the server. So control C and it shuts it down by pressing uh, yes.
So as far as use cases goes for the Jupyter Notebooks, this is great to get up and running and prototyping very quickly. Uh, so this is great. We'll be using it a lot in this channel for our data analysis. And then additionally, the other benefit of this is, is the ability to share. So you can share it via the Python notebook file, or you could even share it as an HTML or PDF document with those colleagues that may not have Python installed on their computer. So to recap, there's four different areas that you can operate your Python code. Uh, on a Mac, you can do it in the terminal. On Windows, you can use it via Command Prompt or PowerShell. Next, we have code editors or text editors. The third thing is those IDEs or integrated development environments. And then finally, which we'll be using a lot on this channel, is the Jupyter Notebooks. This video is part of a series where we go through and sort of understand the basics of using Python for data analytics and data visualization. In the next video, we're gonna be going over how to actually get Microsoft VS Code onto your computer and what are some pros and cons of using that tool. So if that series seems interesting, consider subscribing. Also, it'd be awesome if you smash that like button and drop a comment down below on what you'd like to learn in Python. Hope to see you again.